Welcome to Coffee Commerce. My name is Sean Ramit, and I'm the grandson of a coffee farmer from Guyana, South America. On Coffee Commerce, we talk more than just the stories of coffee and business. We talk about the stories behind coffee and how they relate to our society. We've been talking about England and coffee houses in England. It was said of a traveler in 1668 that coffee houses, which are very numerous in London, are extremely convenient. You have all manners of news there. You have a good fire, which you may sit at as long as you'd like. You have a dish of coffee. You meet with your friends for the transactions of business and all for a penny if you don't care to spend any more. That was said by Max Maximilian Misson. Warm beverages were known in Britain and Europe at the time. Mostly herbal, such as sage, mint, and chamomile, had been used for centuries for medicinal purposes. This is one of the ways that coffee was promoted, more as a healthy beverage in stark comparison to ale. Because coffee was more of a stimulant and promoted sobriety, it became an icon of thinking, intellect, openness to all, but it was also an element of prestige and privilege that would branch off with some coffee houses, as clubs would eventually form. Coffee houses had created an atmosphere in which it was possible to engage in debate and discussions and exchange ideas and conduct business. The coffee houses had become very key cornerstones for entertainment and industry where knowledge was exchanged and relationships were built. This would ultimately lead to the coffee houses becoming a gateway in the 17th and 18th centuries with the Age of Enlightenment. Coffee was an industry driving force behind the creation of many businesses and initiatives during this time. Let's discuss Rothmel's Coffee House. Like Lloyd's and Buttons and others that we've spoken about before, it sets the stage for something that will still have an impact today. This is set in this picture by Anna Katrina Zinkhuysen, which depicts the first meeting of the Society of Arts at Rothmel's Coffee House. Rothmel's Coffee House was located at 25 Henrietta Street in Covent Gardens in London. Like other coffee houses in that area, men of influence would patronize this site. One of the most renowned patrons at Rothmel's would be William Shipley. William Shipley was born in Kent. His father would die when he was three, and William and his brother Jonathan would grow up with their maternal grandmother. At the age of 21, William would come into his inheritance Jonathan would go on to become the Bishop of St. Asaph's. William would move to London and set up a drawing school, which would include some high-profile graduates. It would be around this time that Rothmel's Coffee House came into the picture. Rothmel's Coffee House was a fashionable and respected coffee house whose owner was a standing parishioner at St. Paul's. He was a respected gentleman and news of his death was published in London in the London Evening Post on the 27th of March, 1736. It was here that clergy, gentlemen, and merchants gathered. It would be between the school and the coffee house that William would start to form the ideas for a society for encouragement of arts, manufacturers, and commerce. In 1753, he would publish his proposal for the society. He had hoped to help make Britain a center for intellectual advancement in the areas of arts and sciences. The resulting organization, the Society of the Encouragement of Arts, Manufacturers and Commerce, first met at Rothmel's Coffee House. This would eventually become the RSA, the Royal Society of Arts. The aim of the society was stated as to promote the arts, manufacturing, and commerce of this kingdom by giving honorary and rewar or rewards as may be 
best adopted to the case, for the communication to the society and through the society to the public. Of all such useful inventions, discoveries, and improvements as tend to, to that purpose. It was said of historian Pierre Nicolas Chantreau of Shipley and the RSA that such an institution was founded not by those who held reins of government, but by William Shipley. The society would award premiums for different discoveries and inventions. There appeared in the daily and evening papers a notice announcing premiums or awards. Indeed, this was the case in the area that included textiles, cobalt, and other important aspects of British society and industry. These areas were where premiums and awards were often granted. Rothmel's Coffee House would also bring birth to various humanitarian and charitable endeavors. This would be in keeping with the values of the owner. Being a parishioner at St. Paul's, his values came out in the coffee house and in the patrons of the coffee house as well. Today, much like the days of William Shipley, the Royal Society RSA is dedicated to finding better ways to tackle our most pressing social challenges. In 2018, they added the thought to their thought-provoking events, lectures, and, and materials, the reopening of the Rothmel's Coffee House on their property. It pays homage to the tradition of the coffee house as a, as a social hub where ideas are shared and explored. The original Rothmel's Coffee House is a place that, where that ga groups gathered of like-minded individuals that shared common values and beliefs. It was people like Shipley in a coffee house called Rothmel's that would help impact society and pave the way for the strength of a nation. It would add to the Industrial Revolution and the Age of Enlightenment. It is here we move to not just talking about things as in other coffee houses where there were a place of debate and news, but in doing. And this is what makes Rothmel's and Shipley different and unique. A lot has to do with the values of the coffee house owners. Like Lloyd's, Rothmel's was a breeding ground for success. In this case, to advance their society. And with their religious convictions, they provided an opportunity for those who would not otherwise have had an opportunity, but had great ideas. There are other stories as well that lead the way to the Age of Enlightenment and the Industrial Revolution that happened in England. Perhaps the most prominent member of the RSA was Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin would play a key role in the coffee houses and in various societies, including inventions, politics, and finances. But that's another story for a future episode and more than one cup of coffee. Thank you.